Hi hires, so still on sustainability and interdependence, but in plant and animal breeding, we're looking at how genetic technology is moving us on for what we can do. Okay, so we can use applied genetic technology to plant and animal breeding now. It doesn't have to just be at the level of the microbe, which we had in the last unit. So you can use it, for example, with genome sequencing um, and gene probes just to find out which particular individuals have a specific allele. So if you're looking for a particular allele and you've got the sequence of that allele, then you can use a combination of sequencing as one option or also gene probes. So a gene probe is a complementary sequence which has some way of being seen, whether that's a visual thing with like fluorescence or if you're looking at a, a tag that will allow you to see it from a, another method, okay, radioactive or, or mass. Um, so you can test for a particular gene. So you're looking for well, a particular allele within a gene, being precise here. So what you would do is you would have the sequence of the thing you wanted. You would then make a gene probe for that. And then you could test individuals to find out, did they have that particular form of the gene? And that means you don't have to do test crosses, which can, you know, so that's an extra step that you can avoid. Um, or you could go kind of the next level up, which is to actually just go for full on genetic modification. So that means taking a gene from one organism and different species, generally we're looking at here, and transferring it in. OK, because you're not going to need to use genetic transformation. If it's the same species, you can just use a breeding program for that. So there is some major things that have moved on to, to work out these, these things. And this is a, the big player, uh, Agrobacterium tumefaciens. So Agrobacterium is a soil bacteria, which it normally creates um, something called crown galls on plants. So they attack plants and they form these tumours in the plants. Okay, now the tumours are created by a set of instructions on this plasmid, TI stands for tumour inducing, um, inside the bacteria. So what has been discovered is you can take this TI plasmid, you can use it like a normal plasmid, you can put in the normal DNA that you want to put in, whatever it is. Okay, and then you can use that TI plasmid to go into the plant cells. And what happens and is really important here is that it incorporates this section of DNA into the chromosome of the plants. So you've actually put it in there and it stays in there as opposed to um, just sitting out in the, the cytoplasm. So this will be passed on is the idea. So there are lots of different ways that you can actually do this and plants are the most impressive ones for this because they have a massive ability to regenerate in certainly hugely different at a different level than you have with with animals. So if you have just sections of, of plant now it could, doesn't even have to be in this case you've got discs being removed but you can have um, just cells just a kind of big pile of cells. Um, you incubate them with your engineered Agrobacterium tumefaciens, and then they take up those particular new DNA cells and then they um, are given exactly what they need to grow. So that means you give them particular chemicals that make them grow roots, make them grow shoots, put them into another medium to help them even further and eventually grow up into a full grown plant. OK, so some GM plants that are already out there or are in the pipeline waiting for approvals and things like that or are not quite there yet. So one way you could go down the route is to produce herbicide resistance. So herbicide resistance means that you could increase yield basically because you cut down competition. If you have a herbicide that is not going to affect the things that you're planting but is affecting all the competition, then that means that they get no competition. Um, if you want to deal with something else that causes a reduced yield, and this would be pests, um, what you can do is produce plants that make their own insecticide, um, which is means you don't have to spray with insecticides. Um, this is quite an interesting one. Cotton seeds. Now, cotton plants we make an awful lot of because we want them for the cotton. So that they produce huge quantities of, um, of cotton for us. But they also produce a lot of seeds and you're like, OK, so how can we use those seeds? Because at the moment they are inedible because they produce a chemical which is really quite useful for the plant because it's a natural pesticide. But 
it makes it inedible for us. So if you can make it so they don't produce that particular chemical, it would mean that we have a food source for us. Um, but that means that they're no longer producing natural pesticides. So that's a kind of swings and roundabouts one. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult decision. Golden rice, you may actually have heard of this one, which is where you have something called biofortification. So that means that you have produced um, a plant that's been modified to be more than it was in terms of the chemicals that it has inside it. And so golden rice has got more vitamin E, trying to prevent vitamin E deficiency. Um, so we have cassava is another one that's that's kind of on that, that list. And also we've got another one where it produces a toxin called ricin, castor beans, um, and they're trying to get rid of that. OK, so give some thought as to how these kind of things are useful and why we might want to do them.